Hi friends, I am Wicked Crafty Mom and in real life I am April and I wanted to show you some dangles and bangles to put in and on your book. So this is one of my newest journals, it's my idea book and so it seemed fitting that I put my ideas on it. So these are examples of what we're going to make today. This is just a tassel and from that I have hung this what am I calling it I'm calling it a dangling cluster this is a dangling cluster this is a beaded tassel this tassel beaded dangling cluster with a spot to write on on the back oops still off screen I'm like we're doing close-up work today, so that's why it's... Let's see if I can swing it a little bit. Nope. Okay. A little bit. This way. Let's see if I can swing it this way. Here we go. Okay. That's better. For everybody, I think. Okay. So these... And then this is the other tassel that we're going to make. And then there's some more dangling clusters here. So. These are super fun and easy to make and I think they make a difference. So I am going to grab, you're going to see me use this thread today. This is a um, bobbin of thread that is different pieces that I have sewn or not sewn together but tied together. So I'm going to give myself a good length. Oops. I don't need the whole thing but I'm going to give myself a good length here. And what I did was I just cut, I picked a, a number. When I held it out to look at, sorry, let me start again. Let's try this again. Okay, so these are just old necklaces. They are not anything super special. They're not anything like, you know, they're not the family jewels. Well, they may be the family jewels. Who knows? Um, but these are... Um, why can't I think of the word? Um, whatever. They're just plastic beads. That's all they are. They're the pa plastic beads. You could use Mardi Gras beads if you have them, have them, whatever. Or you could string pony beads if you wanted to. I just happened to use these because these were what I had handy. And I really dig the way they look. So I'm going to move my string out of the way for a minute. Here. Now, when I took this necklace that I made this tassel out of, I held it in my hands and decided about how long I wanted the um, tassel to be. And that is how I decided. So I wanted it to be about this long. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to go ten. And it was about that on the other one. It was nine on the other one. So one. Okay, so now I'm going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm going to cut. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. So I'm just going to cut several of these. Right now I've got three. I think I'm going to do about five because it gives some bulk but not too much. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Beads are wiggly and wormy. Okay. So here's this, and I'll go one more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I feel like I'm counting the rosary right now, guys. <laughs> Except, you know, I've barely ever done that in my real life, but it's funny. Okay, so now I've got these lengths, and there's five of them, as I said, and so I know now from doing this two whole times that this is a good size tassel. This is, this is, once you clump everything together and look, this is what's going to be hanging off. Okay, so the next thing I did, and I just kind of made this up myself the other day, is, oops. I oopsed. I do that a lot. Okay, so 
two. I'm just laying them across the string so that the string catches between the top bead and the next bead. So that's how I'm lining, whoops, that's how I'm lining them up. And that's going to be important because that's how we're keeping everything together. So really guys, the secret to this is just like this. <laughs> All right. And I just went slow because I didn't want any of the beads to pop off. So now I've got this octopus jellyfish tassel that I've made and I'm just tying a knot an extra couple knots in it to keep it together because honestly that's not where the magic it's not so much I mean it is some how it looks obviously but some of it's also just how it sounds. I picked, so I was looking through the jewelry to see what, I have this, I have a container of jewelry that I'm not gonna wear or is old or is broken or whatever. And it makes great craft supplies because I'm not gonna wear them for whatever reason. But these, these, I don't know if you can hear it, hold on. All right, and it just, um, I'm wearing a microphone, so I just doing AS, MD, I think it, AS, ASMR. Either way, that thing where people whisper all creepy like into the, their phones. I like the way it, the beats sounded when they were together and clanking. So, and then I just, I tied a knot here just to kind of keep everything together and then I tied another knot here because if you punch a hole like I did in the I looped it through I'm not gonna do it right now because I don't need another one on this um, but I looped it through here and, and tied it I just used to you know, flip it through so that's why I did that one I'm gonna do one more Whoops, and I'm gonna hit the camera. Okay, so I'm gonna do, oh no. I, for some reason I have a word out here. That's easy though, I can use it in a minute. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm just gonna pick a random point and I'm gonna go hmm, about here. Let's see, I started with a round one, so I'm going to end with like the short little beads. So one, two, three. See, and this is why it was tricky. <laughs> Having issues. One, two, three. Four. And this is why I counted them before because trying to stay where these beads are different from one another, it's easier to measure the, the length against the other ones because they should line up perfectly. But if you have these beads, for example, I keep losing count because I'll have like a kid come in and talk to me or, you know, a husband come in and talk to me or something. So I am going to actually connect these ones at the top with these double beads here. So just going to cut a length again. We know that I had more than enough last time. I'm eyeballing it because that's what I do. Ooh, let go. Okay. Just laying them down. Getting them ready. 
get and I'm comfortable with the idea that they're going to be a tassel. Getting my fingers to work the way they're supposed to. You know, all the little things that one has to do when making a tassel. Whoops. Got to convince the tassel it wants to be a tassel. There. And that's why I go slow. So, I'm going to make a few knots here because I can, I guess. Do, do, do. Did you? Okay. Hello, tassel. All right, I'm not gonna tie the bottom here again. I'm just gonna tie at the top. And it should still work to do the loopy thing that I was talking about. And you could, not on this, but maybe on this. You could dangle them from something is what I'm trying to show you. You could use them for decorating bottles or, you know, whoops, here I go again. Maybe not these bottles, but I'm talking about like decorative bottles. You could put them around the neck of like a, a wine bottle that you like or something. It's a decoration. Okay, so there's one. One dangle down. Two dangles down. I don't know where the other one went. Anyway. Two dangles down. So next we're going to make a tassel. Like so. This is another super easy and fast. This video is actually going to go a lot quicker than I thought. Alright, so I just grab it and wind it around my hands. Because to me this is a good length. And this is what you're looking at. So I like the length of this. It doesn't matter that my threads are tied together and different colors with knots. Like that's not even an issue at all because it just adds to. And when you decide that you've got enough, so this I need to double because there's this batch on the back. So when I look at it, actually, you know what? I am gonna do this though and take this little knot off because that was a good ending point. So. I am going to make my loop here at the top. So I've got a ring. And depending on what you use, it may not stay together as nicely as this one is. So be aware of that. Like you might have something, if you're using something floppier, you might need to lay it down or keep it on your fingers or whatever. Okay. Oh, so this, this is the one I want this loop in. Dirt, dirt, dirt. Watch me mess up on this video, guys. So I just cut where I had knotted because I need to make a knot here. So make a knot here. And probably double knot it. Okay. And whoops. Fumble everywhere, fumble fingers. So this is what we have right now. This is the knot. These are the laces from the knot. The knot was a separate piece of this than the rest. Okay. That's where we're at. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to attempt to tie it in a knot again at the top. And again, this is because I'm going to wrap, you can wrap it, and pull it through itself. Gosh, I hope I am making even a little bit of sense. So then I grabbed a good length on this one. I grabbed, here it is. I grabbed a good length for wrapping around because I wanted this part here. I don't know all the technical words, so pretty much this part is what I got. So when I did that, I laid it across and held on to it and then just wrapped and made sure that I was pulling kind of tight and also so that I was not completely running away from 
if you cross over if you cross over like I just did you trap this one look so you trap this here's the rest of the knot the other half of this trapped it under here so now it can't escape and now it doesn't matter there so now it doesn't matter which direction you had wound it in because you trapped it, the other one and it can't go anywhere I'm off screen again I'm so sorry it's closer than I'm used to so that's weird and also I'm trying to do this fiddly thing and my impulse is just to pull it to my eyeball so I can see it closer to the eyeball so you can see it okay and I mostly hung these just let them hang I'm gonna cut it now I've still got this loop of stuff and it kind of looks like a tassel but it doesn't completely so now I'm just gonna cut the ends of these loops this loop up here is gonna stay looped and this loop here make sure you got all of the and if you want to trap um, trap it if you want to trim it you can trim it if you don't that's fine if you want to pull stuff out apparently you can do that too so here's this here's the top it's ready to be attached to a journal here's this thing and the tassel so that was a tassel I'll do it one more time with less talking so you can just kind of see what I do maybe I'll do less talking so I just wrap it around wrap it around like this that looks like a good length don't cut yourself So these are just the ends of fabrics that I cut up while like making books or um, that kind of thing. All right. So now I'm gonna grab my other, oops, my other longer piece so that I can wrap it around a few times. this knot so I'm not confused about which threads I'm playing with here because that sounds like a thing I'd do all right so uh, oh, okay nope here we go all right Okay, I'm gonna trap it again. Oh, you guys, I just realized I missed bagel time this morning. I'm gonna have to fix that. I'm gonna have a bagel. Bagel time in the morning is just when I sit and eat a bagel. Because I'm wicked creative, huh? But bagel time is an important part of my day, so. Because I really like the way bagels taste. Alright. So. Tassel. And cut the ends. There. This one's a little... I don't know. I like it. They're cute. And I'm holding it off screen again. So, I mean, this one's kind of got crazy hair, but so do I, so it's fine. All right. So those are tassels. And now, look, I've set everything up so that I could find it, and I can't find it all. 
like I need to. Okay, so we're gonna do dangling clusters next. As soon as I find the other piece of my dangling cluster pieces, Where'd it go? Guys, I'm looking around everywhere here right now and I cannot find them. So I have... I prepared. I promise I prepared. Like I was super proud that I was prepared too. Alright, I'm going to pause it. I'll be right back. Okay, I am back and I found them. I have gotten myself to a point where I had prepped for two, two whole videos ahead of time. So, these are what I was looking for here. And these are just book pages that are glued on both sides onto propaganda. Oh, no, this one's not propaganda, sorry. This one is uh, packaging from something. But the propaganda I refer to is the all the stuff that both, both candidates trying for Senate and my state are just sending ridiculous amounts of. And so I've kind of been collecting it just because it's because like it's a lot of cardstock that I can use and they send good quality thick cardstock. We even have some like holographic ones where if you like move them the right way, then this is weird. There's a little bit of a delay on the phone. That's kind of funny. Anyway, so when you when you shift it, when you move it, it like has a different like two pictures. You like one when you hold it one way, one when you hold it the other way. I am using that first for this, for crafting, because some of the spots are blank and it just is a neat effect. Like it's not blank blank, but like there's no like candidate words and junk on it. Anyway, so these are a great way to get rid of propaganda. Um, these are, so I made a bunch of these and I just cut them out and then I took my We Are Memory Keepers Crocodile corner chomper and I just used these are quarter inch so there's that as a reminder dangling clusters sounds like a disease but it's not okay so that's dangling clusters and look I've got this word here that I found Let's go with intense that'll work so what I found when I was trying to make these was a couple of things I found first of all that um, I wanted to make sure they had a spot to write on on the back I found that the clusters that I had made ahead were not small enough for these so I what we're gonna do is we're gonna make smaller clusters because that's what we need to do to to put them on this they don't have to fit inside the edges. Whoops, they don't have to fit inside the edges. But you want them to not be too, um, to have too many appendages, so to speak. Because you want them to, um, not catch on stuff. Like if they're going to be on your, excuse me for just a second. Sorry, I had to cough. If they're going to be on the outside of your journal, and they don't have to be, but if they are, then you want less, fewer little things to, to stick out and grab onto other stuff. Somewhere I'm making sense. If you put the words together in maybe a different order, you'll understand what I'm saying. I don't know. Anyway, so I'm inking the edges and I'm using my inks that I, this, this is kind of junk for this, but we are going to be using an eyelet so it will stay on. I just may have to re-glue. 
what I think I'm going to go through and do, and this is good to know because it's been a couple days since I made these, I'm going to go through and I'm going to Mod Podge the entire thing. I'm not going to do that on camera, but I am going to take through and go through and take these and Mod Podge all of them so that I have sort of a seal around here that it can grab onto because I am tired of re-gluing all these things like this all the time. They're not holding well because I didn't, I didn't give it any way to hold well. I set myself up for failure on these ones because I didn't scratch up the carved stock or anything like that. I just left it as a shiny surface and I know I should be sanding it or doing something to it to rough it up so that the glue has something to stick on. So this is all you got to do. It just gives it something to bite onto, so to speak. So there, I'm going to do it on this one, fix it. I'm not going to worry about it on the other ones because I just told you what lesson I learned um, with these. So, okay. So I've got this base. You want to get the front and the back. And here's why. The, if these are hanging, they're going to flip on the journal, most likely. So... I am not using my vintage green. I am using just six. No, June six is what it's called. June six. And this is, I don't know what color. It's yellow. They all came in a, a pack. It wasn't super labeled. It was just, here, have a pack of ink. I'm okay with that. So, all right. So now these are all inked. And just so you can see, I have taken my daubers and I have put circles cut out circles for all of them to rest my dauber on so that the ink will will color this circle and then i'll have an indicator of what ink colors i have and also i wanted the daubers to match the the numbers to match this so that i i know i'm just tired of i don't want to worry about mixing stuff up this is a simple way for me to to do this okay so now that i've got my base I'm going to cut this. It's not too bad. And I'm going to take some of... So I'm just grabbing scraps. I'm just grabbing what's here. Little pieces, something that's pretty much going to fit within the framework of this, but may have some, you know, disagreements with it. May have some outstretched hands. You can definitely ink this. I'm not going to ink this particular project. Okay. So now I'm going to take my stapler. Oh, wait, no. Nope. <laughs> I'm getting there, guys. I'm still, like, I don't even know if I'm waking up or not. I'm just, this is just a little scrap of fabric. Stick it on here. So I've got two, uh, three layers of paper, and then a stack of stack of fabric, and then I staple it. Now, the next thing I do now that I've got something that's going to fit. Hey, hey, yeah, okay. Oh, guys. I cleaned up my table and now I can't find anything. That's not necessarily true. It is true that I cleaned up the table. It's not true that I can't find anything. I just keep reorganizing myself here. Okay, so I'm adding an eyelet to the corner. It doesn't matter whichever side is my front, I'm gonna put this on it, this part. This is the other part. Now, these are weird eyelets and they don't work as easily as some of the other eyelets I've seen. I also have a harder time setting them because um, my handle's chewed up and it's a little more awkward. Um, okay, so I've got the eyelet in. I have my cluster made, my little cluster. All I gotta do is glue. 
and that is how simple those are and you can make you know I made like four and I wasn't even like trying to, I just started making them and then I was like oh I'm gonna keep making these I got super excited about this video I got so excited and the next one okay so I said I wanted a place to write on on the back so, this I'm going to ink. This we're going to ink with the yellow. And I just found a whole nother pile of ink that I'm going to have to go through and see if it's even worth saving it. I'm guessing probably not, which stinks. Oh, look, you can glue it on and then it falls off anyway. Really, I just needed to hold it on longer. Um, and I might not write anything, you know, I'm obviously not going to be like journaling, journaling on this, but I could write a little fun fact about the day or a little quote or something. So this, and it's going to hang like this. one done all right so I'm gonna make another one just to show you again also because making another one means that I have another one in my stash which is nice because I really really dig them so I'm just gonna put a big coat of whoops big coat of whoops I'm just gonna put a big coat of like a decently sized thick coat of um, Mod Podge on. Here, let's do this. Let's do this first. I'm going to put a big batch of Mod Podge on these so that it'll seal them. Which, I, I mean, I don't necessarily, I'm not going to pour it on, but I'm not going to be shy about it either. Look at that. I brought my ink pad cover over and not my ink pad. Helpful helpful okay so super intense purple and I have some like lilac purples also and that's one of the reasons I don't always want this intensity and if there's this left over in my dauber then that's what I'm gonna get is this intensity especially if I wet the ink with the other ink and so if this is on here and I've got a lighter color and I dip it in the lighter color, this is going to bleed through because it's going to reactivate the ink. It's going to make it wet again. Right, this is what I'm doing next. Okay. Eyelet. Eyelet setter. You can use a regular eyelet setter with the hammer and the, um, you know, the banging. <laughs> and I have no problem doing that. But sometimes this is just easier because, like, say, sometimes my kids are sleeping or my husband's sleeping or whatever. This one does not want to set. There. So I have this really weird phenomenon happening. It's not really weird. It's probably muscle atrophy. But I went to open something last night for one of my kids. I couldn't do it. I was so upset. <laughs> And then he tried to show off. That was even better. He tried to show off and like open up for one of the 14 year old tried to show off and open up for me and like he couldn't. <laughs> so of course I mercilessly mocked him for thinking he was that much stronger than his mama. <laughs> Apparently I'm just gluing this cluster on because I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. You know what, I'm not gonna glue this cluster. So here's part of it, one, two, and let's find a different paper than the one that I was already using. Let's find a colored paper. Here's a colored paper, here's a nice piece of red. Okay, there's that. One, two, there's three. I already glued it down because talking. And here's a scrap of fabric. So, I am going to actually not put a word on this one right now. Just going to glue it down, and here's why. 
I'm going to attach this dangle to a book, but I'm not sure which book yet. And I'm not sure if I'm going to have a word on here that goes with whatever book it ends up on. I like to leave some of the decorating to the last minute so that I can just add those simple touches that will then tie everything together the way I want it to. So even though I can mass make these and get these ready, there's still room for me to add stuff later. All right. Let's ink this baby up. Slap it down. This is actually a longer video than I thought it was going to be. But, like, in a good way. <laughs> I thought I was going to run out of stuff to do. And I'm not, so. Alright. So it is all inked. Oops. And prepped and ready. There we go. Okay. And then I can just... Hey, look, a piece of thread. I can just... This is what I'm talking about when I say loop, loop it through. Do, do. What? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this one. It's got a lot of the same colors. I'm going to attach this one right to... Whoops. You can't see anything I'm doing. This has a lot of the same colors. I'm going to attach it right to the tag. <coughs> Excuse me. So they come as a package. There. And if I don't want it on there, like, later when I go to put it on, it'll come right off. But that's what I mean when I say loop it through. All right, so I'm going to take this one that I did, and I'm going to loop the string through. And then I can tie it on later. If I can show you what I'm doing. Very bad at this video thing. This camera is at a weird angle today, though, because I wanted to do up-close stuff, so... Also, I'm having camera issues. Okay. So there's that. And this. And they will attach nicely to your journals. And I know, because I've done it. Ta-da! Alright. That is going to do it for this video today. Thank you so much for checking me out. If you like what you saw here, please subscribe, like, share the videos. Um, if you're interested in joining my Facebook group and you haven't already joined, it is Wicked Crafty Mom. And um, that is, that's all, my, that's my spiel. So thank you. Have a great day. Bye.